morning everyone and welcome to the earnings conference call of Credit and Network Limited. On the company today, we have Mr. H.P. Singh, Chairman, Come Managing Director, Credit Care Network Limited, and the Senior Management Team. We will have a brief overview on the year and the business from the management team, post which we will open the floor for Q&A. With that, I would like to hand over to Mr. H.P. Singh for his opening comments. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Will. Good morning, everyone. Okay, thank you for joining to discuss our company's fourth quarter and the financial year 2024 performance. I believe you have had the opportunity to go through our quarterly results and investor presentation. If you haven't gone through them yet, you can access them on our website or through stock exchanges. The fiscal year FY24 stands out, stands out as a momentous chapter in our 33 year long journey where we've reshaped countless opportunities, redefined our trajectory, and met success in all financial and operational metrics. We witnessed growth in assets under management, AUM, recorded the highest yearly disbursement, observed robust customer addition, maintained our pristine asset quality, improved our net interest margin, reduced the OPEX ratio, and fortified our capital base, paving the way for a successful year for all our stakeholders. It's comforting to mention that we have surpassed the targeting of our standalone annual performance targets on most of the parameters such as our AUM group is 4% against the 25% plus added range, M of 13.2% as against 12.1% to 12.5% margins, ROA stood at 4.8% as against the 3.5% to 4% guided range, cost to income ratio stands at 42.6% as against 45 to 50% guidance. Capital adequacy ratio stood at 27.7%, surpassing the guided range of 22 to 25%. Debt to equity ratio at 2.6x as against 2.5x to 4x guided range. The rest three are also well within guidance range, which are our OPEX to average AUM ratio of 5.60% as against 5.0% to 5.75% guidance, credit cost of 1.44% as against guidance rate of 1.5 to 1.50%, and ROE of 18.5% as against the 17.5 to 90% guidance. Our Punjab portfolio performance was a little due to the ongoing local challenges. However, with taking timely actions, we have been able to contain the issues. The total on portfolio in Punjab stands as rupees 369 crore as of March 24. Overall, par 1 in Punjab stands at rupees 65 crore and par 90 at 19 crore. Out of this, par 1 in the 10 affected branches stands at 23 crore and par 90 is at rupees 11 crore. Our collection efficiency in the state is 97% for FY24 and 92% for Q4 and Q24. Currently, we have slowed down our disbursement in the affected area and have deployed additional collection officers to engage with and motivate the clients, and we are making success in that. Coming to our operational performance, we close the financial year by recording 50% year-on-year growth in AUM. It stood at rupees 11,850 crore on a consolidated basis. On a standalone basis, the GLP stood at 10,593 crore, up by 34%. Securing the 10,000 crore milestone in SCNL was a historic moment for us this year, underscoring our client's trust and our team's resilience and fueling our momentum forward. We continue to witness robust growth in our borrower base. We added 6.3 lakh customers on a consolidated basis and 7.8 lakh on a standalone basis, highlighting our expanding footprint, operating efficiencies, and growing demand for our services. We recorded our highest yearly disbursement both on a consolidated and standalone basis. Consolidated disbursement at 10,549 crore, grew by 30% year on year, and standalone at 9,691 crore, up by 31%. We forayed into two new states, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, in line with our strategy to expand our inclusive sector to more individuals from low income groups. With this expansion, our business is the first 28 in union territories. The branch infrastructure now stands at 1,393, with the opening up of 107 new branches spread.
spread across 421 districts. The robust underpinnings of our organization includes our solid fundamentals, ethical work practices, customer-centric business approach, and employee-focused operational framework have ensured our constant social relevance. As a result, we have emerged as a preferred financial ally for numerous low-income households throughout rural India. This is also evident from the healthy number of first cycle customers at 55%. During the reporting year, we maintain our sense of our healthy collection and asset. The on-book GNP of the company is 198 crores, 2.5% of the on-book portfolio. The company has sufficient on-book provision of 164 crore as on March 24. It is 2.1% of its on portfolio, exceeds the RPI mandatory provision requirement of 148 crores. Furthermore, the overall provision coverage ratio stood at 83% as of March 24, marking a significant increase from 64% recorded in March 23. The performance of the new portfolio originated from July 21 onward continues to perform better than the industry which constitutes about 97% of the on-book MFI portfolio, with PAR1 at 2.5% against industry PAR1 at 0.90%, PAR90 at 1.5% against industry PAR90 at 3.60%. This demonstrates the effectiveness of our underwriting processes. The collection efficiency during consistent quarter on quarter of the reporting period is to get 98.5% for the year on a standalone basis. The collection against right of pool is at 26 crores. We commend our dedicated field staff for their relentless effort in ensuring successful loan recovery through persistent follow-ups and client engagement. This year, the industry witnessed a remarkable surge in credit demand from the rural market, a trend vividly illustrated in the figures of the industry's loan portfolio. The rising internet penetration, improved income levels, and evolving aspiration lifestyles in rural areas Hosting an environment conducive to sustain growth and spread the demand. Furthermore, the economic forecast is optimistic with predictions of an above normal monsoon in the coming time, which will in turn boost agriculture productivity and disposable incomes. All these factors bring in good news for MFIs like us, who are predominantly rural, in case to those at the bottom of the pyramid, as we further enhance footprints into the expanding market. Coming to our financials now, the company's accommodated net interest income grew by 40%. Each 1,340 crore, largely driven by a robust known growth portfolio in the reporting financial year. The pre provisioning operating profit for FY24 stood to be 730 crore, registering a growth of 80% on a consolidated basis. Additional interest in pre provisioning operating profit on standalone are at 1,280 crore and 699 crore, respectively. Our profitability milestone set the new mark as we recorded a profit of 460 crore as against 5 crore in the previous year on a consolidated basis. So standalone basis, we recorded a start of 420 crore, up 60% year on year from 264 crore, uh, 264 crore in the previous fiscal year. Our office to average premium ratio witnessed significant improvement, dropping to 5.8% on a consolidated basis compared to the previous 6.3%. Similarly, on a standalone basis, the ratio decreased to 5.6% on the previous 6.3%. These decreases in the percentage demonstrates our step of obligation to optimizing operational efficiency and resource allocation throughout our operations. Likewise, our cost to income ratio improved to 45.2% as against the 56.5% on the basis, and on standalone basis, that 2.6% as against 54.3% in the previous fiscal. On front, this year, we have locked 39% increase on year 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 basis and raised 9,494 crores from various lenders on standalone basis. Additionally, the company added 50 new lenders, draw good comfort from a diversified liability profile with continued access to funds from domestic and international lenders, improved credit rating, also well capitalized energy to retain sufficient liquidity, and strong control on our borrowing cost. Delving into our robust capitalization endeavor, we successfully complete we have successfully completed 15 rounds of capital raising since 2008, culminating in a remarkable sum of 15.7 crore, out of which 595 crore was raised post-COVID-19, the last round of QIP of 250 crore done in December 23. As on March 24th, the company has ample liquidity of 1,100 crore and has a healthy CRAR of 27.7%. 
Sharing our perspective on the ongoing KYC issues in the industry, I would like to say that it's like increased digitization and is evolving rapidly. However, along with the myriad benefits or laws, also emerge significant challenges that demand vigilant attention, particularly in the realm of security. One such challenge is the rising occurrence of authenticity of KYC. At Saturn, we take pride in upholding the highest bits in our internal system in authentic customer onboarding. Rigorously adhering to stringent guidelines and protocols we has been integral to safeguarding our customers' operation and maintaining transparency. With strong underwriting capability and bringing in cutting edge and new age technology to onboard our customers, such as iris based verification, geotagging, key signatures, etc. We tried hard to rule out instances of fraud, non compliance and other potential issues. Through strategic investment and a robust infrastructure, we are not just saving our business operation, we are paving the way for enduring growth and triumph in ever-evolving digital realm. Over the past two years, our relentless pursuit of digitization has yielded tangible results. For instance, we have a remarkable reduction in our branch manual registers from 20 to just 6, which has led to a more streamlined process, processes and enhanced efficiency. There's a very strong uptime of 99.6%, which translates into a very strong tech advantage. This combination of technological advancement and operational excellence propels us forward to the prime in today's dynamic business landscape. Like I said in the beginning, this year has proven to be a success for us and has, <clears throat> sorry, has demonstrated our resolution to excellence. We earned multiple laurels for our processes, compliance, innovation, and consistent performance. Name a few. Our company was awarded with the standard of ISO 27001 2022 in information security. We have received the highest rating and double AESG rating and gold level certification on client protection system. We were recognized as great to work for the fifth consecutive career and top 50 great places to work two years in a row, amongst others. Going ahead with an extensive reach planning plan in India, a distinctive operating model. A diversified product portfolio on secured and unsecured lending, a robust technology infrastructure, seasoned board and management personnel, diversified liability profile, a resilient business model, and a strong talent sheet. We are poised to be at the forefront. Our aim is clear to be the ultimate one stop financial services provider, primarily in the rural area, differentiated by our process and technology, and to emerge as a preferred financial ally for millions of underserved local income, low income households. Now, let me run you through the financial and operational highlights of our company. Starting so, with tolerated highlights, we have a customer base of 34.7 lakhs as on 31st March 2022. Presence across 1393 branches and 421 districts of India. Our top source is possible to 56% of total AUM and FI24, and the UP, Bihar, West Bengal, and Madhya Pradesh. The total revenue for the year is 2,241 crore, and 24% year in year. Standalone highlights. The average monthly disbursement rate run rate is uh, is about 808 crore. The average ticket price of MFI for MFI 24 stood at 47,000. We have a well diversified customer base of approximately now 36.4 lakh clients with 76 percent rural exposure. 54 percent of our clients belong to first cycle as in March 24. We have 158 branches during the year. Add for FI 24. At 223 crore, ROA at 2.6% and ROA at 15.5%. Net worth is at 2,667 crore as on 31st March 2024. Total borrowing stood at 7,269 crore as on 31st March 2024. Equity ratio is at 2.7x. As on 31st March 2024, 96.4% of our districts have less than 1% of portfolio exposure. In our constant endeavor to enrich our customer life, we provide financing of various products which includes loans for bicycles, solar products, home financing, consumer durables, and water and sanitation facilities. An update on subsidies. Through the collective efforts of our subsidies, we aim to extend the spectrum of financial services to our clients. By harnessing the strength of our microfinance outreach, we endeavor to extend affordable housing and retail MSME loans specifically to clients who have completed more than two loan cycles with the company and have higher credit requirements. This approach aligns us with a broader strategy of customer life cycle management. By servicing microfinance graduated clients, we are not only deepening our relationship with existing clients, but also capitalize on their evolving financial needs and capabilities. Current Housing Finance Limited has now reached an AM of 736 crore, which grew by 50% year on year, having presence across 
with 7,456 customers. SHFL has a 100% retail book. The quality of portfolio remains intact with GNP of 0.8% as on March 24. The company has 26 active lenders, including NSPD Finance, CRAR of 292, of 2.2x, FAT for FY22, FY24, 9 crore, credit rating of A minus table from ICRA. Until Finserve Limited, the company's MSME lending arm has reached an AOM of 501 crore. We are running the business correspondent book and focusing on building MSME retail book going forward. CRAR of 8% and getting of 1.4x, FAT for FY24, 5 crore. Credit rating of A minus A from ICRA. In summary, as we progress on the path of expansion, we are poised to embrace greater profitability while upholding cost efficiency. With this, I would like to open the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, press star N1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star N2. Participants are requested to use answers while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Usha Toshan from Toshan Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. So may Hello. I request you to use your handset, please? Uh, on behalf of Usha Sharma, I am uh, Prabhudayal Sharma. Sir, good morning. Good morning, Hello. Uh, Sir, congratulations for presenting superb performance on all fronts. Sir. I have some questions. Uh, for Sorry me. to interrupt you, uh, sir. May I request you to use your handset, please? Your audio is muffled, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, congratulations for presenting super performance on all fronts. I have some questions. First, sir, our cost of funds always higher by around 100 basis points with compare of still leader. While our uh, credit rating is at our uh, why, sir? Second, as you guide 25% CSGR growth till 2028, are you sure we will able to achieve 29,000 crore AUM by 2028 and 25% growth look of 29,000 crore AUM? Sir, finally, sir, congratulations you got in your most trusted leader award in the year. I have, I think, uh, sir, Mark is still not trusting or our past some across when we see the real value or market share of the company. Thanks, and thank you so much. Financially, let me, let me piece this one by one, you know, basically. So, on the, the rating, I think, you know, we got an update, you know, uh, technically, I think uh, COVID had whatever reasons it had in terms of, you know, whatever the rating is, it is probably look at. I think with the robust performance coming in now for the last, I think about 10, 11 quarters or not, you know, my sense is that, you know, this will keep on improving, you know. We've had uh, success a little bit on our cost of work, definitely, yes, you know. But if you really ask us, you know, it's a constant feature, it's a work and process which happens practically every time you, when we go in. And we've been able to have a slight reduction in our in our cost of funds, you know, this is years, which is probably 50 odd basis points, you know, and really I think, you know, this is going to be uh, a feature which is probably going to be uh, with us uh, in, the, in the future. On our uh, achieving a guidance of 27 plus, you know, uh, we are very, very uh, positive and we are very sure that we'll be able to achieve a 25 percent guidance of all the factors mentioned above. Uh, in my own speech, you know, where I said, you know, if you look at the sector position, they are very conducive. If you look at the range of the branches which you have in territories, where there is lesser penetration, I think, you know, that is an advantage which we hold very well. Uh, for us, uh, for going into the situation, I think, you know, we've done uh, wonderfully well by uh, keeping our operating efficiencies better, as well as reducing our exposure not beyond one percent in majority of the percent. So I think, you know, the culmination of all that, you know, 
Uh, will probably give us an advantage that 25 percent plus uh, for us not even a slight challenge, you know, moving forward ahead. On the third, in terms of the market cap, you know, I think probably I'm not the best person to give you an answer on that. I think, you know, uh, it's for people to really decide that I, I only, you know, take on this is that, you know, we actually performed very well uh, if you look at the complete data which we've given in terms of our uh, resilience, in terms of our profitability, in terms of our growth, in terms of our asset quality, in terms of, you know, I would add, you know, technological advantage which we have, you know. So when, you know, uh, for us onboarding of a customer as from a start of a onboarding of a customer to traveling money from right of books, you know, I think, you know, it's done it all, you know. It is all a function of the market to really look at it. But I may add on to this, you know, besides microfinance, I think, you know, we've got two babies which are coming up, which are becoming very, very strong now, which is our subsidies of Saturn Simpsons and Saturn Housing. I think, you know, it is only a question of time and people will actually be able to realize the ultimate benefits of these two subsidies when they come up the fold uh, on a bigger scale, you know. And I think, you know, for us, this is the advantage which we can see as an institution uh, with microfinance and two of our secure lending uh, subsidies of SERV and uh, SHFL. I hope I've answered all your questions. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Samir Bhutte from AM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, the opportunity and congrats on a good quarter. Uh, can you tell the right of amount for uh, for Fortune? What of four, the right of right of amount? 44 crore was the right of amount Q4 FY44. Okay, and any uh, details on what portfolio was it? Was it uh, the the April 21 book or, or a specific state? Actually, when we write off, we actually take, because see, our slippage is so less, we actually do account by account feedback from the team, where they have exhausted all their efforts and they, they give up. So majorly it is 360 plus and above, but sometimes we even take a look to it when it is here, when the field uh, team gives us that. And then just to add, you know, wherever we don't write, we make adequate provisions or provision coverage ratio is 83%. So wherever sort of we have to connect one, it's already being provided for. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, secondly, if you could uh, disclose the stage and stage two provisions, uh, may not be this time around, but as an ongoing access, it will be great. Uh, if you could share the numbers, uh, that would be helpful. I think we can share the numbers with you basically offline, you know. Uh, sure. Point, uh, you know, we'll be able to, uh, we'll show that also now. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Agarwal from BP Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Nikhil Agarwal, may we request you to unmute your line from your side, please? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, sir, please go ahead. Okay, hi, thank you for taking my question. So, uh, congratulations on uh, good numbers on all fronts, uh, except this one clarification that needs on, uh, on provision. Uh, so, uh, with regard to this Punjab book, now this quote, it would come to the affected areas and the affected amount of portfolio was really very low. It was around 14, 15 crores. And out of that, we have already seen, as uh, stated in the presentation and as it's seen earlier, we have already seen 11 to 12 crores of impact. So going forward, are there any other issues that we're going to see? Uh, is this going to be repetitive? And uh, uh, and again, on the right of portfolio, if you could uh, just uh, get some clear view on where these right of uh, books have come from. So, so on the Punjab portfolio, I think, you know, if I can give you a flavor, uh, the power one has remained uh, steady at about 20 odd crores, 23 crores, you know, since the last three to four months, you know. So if you look at the duration in branches, it has not happened. So no fresh new power is coming in. It's only that flow which is happening in this uh, 
uh, in the 90s, you know, probably which has been there, and that which is also if you really look at the overall scenario, I think in terms of uh, the complete balance sheet, this is particularly insignificant. So that's on that, you know, write off is there's no specific write off. Technically, write off is a function of you know what technically says that you know they'll not be able to collect as well as you know the function of maybe somewhere a DPD. Uh, overall, it is practically, you know, it's everywhere. You know, we pick up, you know, wherever it is not coming. So it's not it's specific uh, if that is what you uh, really want to know. And there is nothing in terms of, you know, looking at we do it in cases uh, with, with confrontation with the operation team, you know. All right. And, uh, sir, with regard to our 90 plus uh, flows, because of which uh, we have seen uh, stress. In the Punjab book, those R90 plus flows have also elapsed, or there's more there. Because I understand that R1 plus, we are not seeing any inflow or any fresh threat. But in the R90 plus flows, which are attended, uh, is there any more uh, left? There's nothing, you know, if you really look at it, it's the R90 is closer to about, you know, 13 or 11, 11 crore. No, no, my 11 crore, if you look at R1, which is 23, inclusive of that 11 crore. What you might have maybe in addition, you know, going forward would be another maybe so five, seven, eight, ten crores, you know, which will come in. Which, as I said, if you look at the complete construction, the overall credit cost and the this thing, you know, what it cost is 1.44 percent. I think you know, which is probably uh, pretty, pretty healthy. You know, uh, looking at uh, whatever is going on in the entire uh, country in terms of you know how uh, uh, Microsoft is shaping up. You know, my sense is that, uh, this board uh, that there has been an effective. Uh, stoppages, uh, stoppage, you know, probably the uh, uh, the flows into the and uh, even in the Punjab circle as well. Got it, got it. Well, give me clarity. So seven eight flows that you're saying that now might come. Uh, whatever number it is, five to ten. Uh, is it again gradual or is it a one-time thing that? So does it hit the book uh, suddenly or like one quarter thing or is it staggered uh, over two three quarters? Staggered over two quarters as such, you know, basically. So I think, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a very low number, you know, as compared to what people's apprehension was on Punjab portfolio. So I think, you know, uh, even if it's uh, staggered across, maybe it's about 5 7 crores per quarter as such, you know. Got it. Got it. Thank you so much. Also, uh, can I ask one more question? Please, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, one thing, okay, we have the highest yeah. operating yeah. expense ratio in the space that we operate in, all right? In the MFI space. So I just wanted to know. Are you actually need to the fact we the highest in fact you know we're closer to probably. Yeah. So we are uh, what everyone says, barring the largest player in the country. Practically, if you see another competitor declared their results, their OPS is 2.6, and ours is actually at the average and at the lower spectrum of the average, barring all industry leaders. Is okay. I'm looking at the. Uh, I'm looking only at the standalone MSI book, uh, and I'm comparing it. To this is what I'm uh, referring to, the standalone book. Okay, let's talk the last quarter numbers. In last quarter, we were actually at the lower end of the spectrum when we look at the OPEX of, I said, except the industry leader. Rest, everyone is from 5.8 to 6.30. And we were at, again, 5.8, 5.9% of the last quarter is where we are. All right. And uh, are we doing anything? Uh, uh, anything specific to bring this down? Is there? Uh, uh, is there? When, is there a timeline when operating leverages is going to change? I think this is working properly. This is working properly. You know, we never always bring it the opex up uh, to bring in more opex leverage. And with the denominator space increasing, I think you know we 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 will be able to achieve something or the other. You know, in the opex, you know, uh, coming down. You know. So we have actually given a slide on the uh, operating efficiency, and if you see, we have actually achieved more than 25 percent operating efficiency on the existing set of branches, loan uh, account per loan officer, or the clients per sector. So this is how our one is this, and second, of course, is the base effect, which takes it to uh, as a. Uh, we are going to a significant improvement during last financial year, and we are on the lower end of the guidance that we have given. So, so and then we are committed to work further and then sort of say keep it and improve it. So, so you see the improvement from last year, it's quite yes. significant. Yes, that is uh, perfectly visible. Congratulations. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddharth O'Brien. From Print Equity, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. So this is a fantastic set of financial numbers that you've announced. 
<laughs> my query is on the 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 avian growth. So, you see, you've been growing for the last few quarters at thirty percent plus. This percent also thirty percent. Is this some piece of demand that uh, that has come up, or is it? Do you think this is sustainable going forward? Just you know, that we, you know, as our guidance, you know, for us, you know, given thirty percent plus, you know, and uh, our forays into penetrated space and as well as you know taking on new stakes along with the existing uh, borrower base you know and the deepening of geographical presence in underprivileged states you know i think for us 25% plus uh, growth is absolutely a no brainer no? Uh, to be very honest you know in fact for us it is always has been uh, to try and beat that you know and certainly as we see in this you know this this we we'll probably be able to do that and just to add to why the 25% is a no brainer even if you see this year the growth in clients is more than 22% and so actually it's a very sustainable organic business volume growth it is not merely on account of the ticket size which is not growing as much as the overall growth just another comment is it any particular region or is it all the uh, the 26 states so across uh, oh, uh, uh, I'm glad you asked this question because uh, when we got the market study uh, done, when we did our QIP, we actually saw that we are actually present in under penetrated and lesser penetrated geographies across the industry vis a vis our peers in competition. For instance, states like UP, states like Assam, states like uh, Central Part of India, etc., barely two digit in terms of the penetration. If you look at the overall population, there is a huge pent up demand. And we are also seeing even the industries taking note of it and they are also wanting to go to these anti penetrated states away from the original hub of microfinance which was Indonesia. Okay. All right. Uh, so 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 basically that was my question that if this uh, loan growth is sustainable then uh, you know, so uh, ballpark do we expect something like a fourteen thousand CR AUM, you know, probably for FI twenty four twenty five. I'll say that everybody guess, you know. Uh, yeah. But uh, we we'll try and much uh, closer to that, you know. For sure. All right. Sure. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shreyans Jain from Electrum PMS. Please go ahead. Congratulations on our great success numbers. I just Thank have you. one question. One of our competitors mentioned that there is a Karza Mukhtiyan happening in Rajasthan and India as well. Have we seen some success there? Or like, what's the situation on the ground there? Uh, to be very honest, we haven't seen any stress uh, because of Karza uh, uh, Mukhtiyan in Rajasthan as well as India. For us, it's business as normal. So, no, zero no, no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Agarwal from Water Equity. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, my question uh, is nice to somebody who said that, you know, pattern seems to be present in more of the printed or unprinted districts. I just wanted to understand this 57 percent loan one customers. I'm assuming it's for uh, and loan one and not just not new to credit. So my one question is, uh, what is the breakup of that 57 percent in terms of new to credit and uh, you know uh, new to starting from older MSI? And my second uh, point is, do you do risk based for these customers who are into higher cycles who are matured? So what is there any mechanism for risk based pricing? Thank you, so, hi, this is Aditi Singh. Uh, so, in first cycle, while there are 55% first cycle customers for pattern for every incremental disbursement, 18 to 20% are actually new to credit. So, that was your first question. And, and we are actually going to, we have just introduced, we have now introduced risk based pricing for the subsequent cycles. So, this has been an effective April. What is the approximate benefit you are giving to customers if you can disclose that? Sorry to interrupt, sir. Uh, we are unable to hear you. May I request you to use your handset, please? Yeah, sorry. So, I'm asking uh, what is incremental benefit 
are giving to the
Uh, I think, you know, we're just waiting for the predictions to finish off. And uh, once that finishes off and the results come out, I think we may uh, look at, uh, re-look at it basically. But as of now, currently, we uh, look at this is which is within the guided range in itself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vignesh Ayer from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Well, congratulations, sir, on good set of numbers and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, my question, I think, uh, is related to uh, ROA uh, at a sense of more on a consolidated level basis. Uh, so, looking at a more, uh, you know, three or four years down the line, what is the steady state ROA that uh, uh, we can achieve? See, uh, for us, uh, we did an analyst meet, and I think, you know, for us, a steady state, including console and everything, you know, for us, uh, would be, again, in the range of about 4.8, you know, uh, percent or so, you know, that's a steady state, you know, which we are to look at. So, we'll be within that range of about, uh, let's say, 4.8 to, let's say, 4.9 or 5, you know. I think it's going to be within that uh, realm, you know. So, the, so, this includes, I mean, I, I, this is like consolidated business, right? And uh, what would the number be for ROE? ROE will be, uh, I think, 20% plus, you know, for sure. Uh, we will be 18% for the future. My sense is in our team, you know, for us, looking at the capital adequacy, profitability, ROE, and everything put together, I think it will be always the 20% plus, you know. So, we have a range of 21, 22%, and I think that is what our uh, effective consolidation guidance is. Okay. So, uh, so I just I spent for even more than that. Uh, so, what would be the uh, mix of the uh, of book lending and the uh, uh, triple uh, even? What uh, would the number would share with us? So, I think you know for us uh, we are dropping our off, you know slowly steadily year on year. I think you know a year before that you know it was closer to about uh, twenty nine percent, down to about twenty three percent now. For us, uh, for us going forward, uh, uh, we would be bringing it down to uh, I think closer to about 20 percent or lower than that, you know, in the next couple of years. I think it's going to be below 20 percent. Okay. Okay. Sir. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Suryansh from Bizx Enterprise LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Congratulations. Uh, uh, my question was that uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, average cost of borrowing and uh, versus uh, like increment cost of funds? Uh, this was my question. Just one minute. Yeah. So, so marginal cost of borrowing is closer to 7.5% or so. We've got the rating upgrade only towards the beginning of last quarter. Getting some overall success there, the intended cost will come down over a period of time. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, will we go for capital days uh, near time, or we, we have done whatever we have, uh, we have to raise? We're looking at 25% plus uh, and the capital adequacy right now. I think you know, we don't have any kind of uh, uh, process of going for any capital raise you know, uh, in the industry. Okay, sir. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abbas Yadavi from CAO Capital. Please go ahead. Oh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. You are. Uh, uh, good morning, sir. Uh, congratulations on great set of answers. Uh, so I have a few questions. The first is a follow-up on what Aditi uh, was saying in terms of penetration level. So, Aditi, how are you defining the penetration level? This is actually uh, done on the basis of the principal households who are below a certain income level and how much households have availed any formal credit, including microfinance. And India, how, how much would you, uh, what kind of number would you describe to this penetration based on this? Parameter? While we do not have Pan India, what we have seen from that crystal report is Tamil Nadu and uh, has been uh, has the highest around 60-65%. Followed by states like Bihar and Karnataka at around 55 odd percent. So this is what the high penetration is, around 65 percent, the highest across the industry. Okay. 
And when you said UP is double-digit, you meant like then it will be set or 20. 70 to 80 percent is the number for UP. So that's the comparison. UP is about 70 percent uh, penetration as compared to these uh, higher states of about 60-65 uh, percent. So that's the difference, you know. Right. And so individually, if you look at like cross geographies, how what is the um, if you compare it households of Tamil Nadu to UP, I'm pretty sure the density to borrow would be different, and the amount to which they can uh, the profitable borrowing that will also be different. So if you just do a household by household comparison, uh, what would be the relative size of UP with respect to let's say Tamil Nadu or Andhra Pradesh? Size in terms of number of people or income level? No, I, I'm saying uh, 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 the extent, let's say income level or uh, the borrowing levels. Okay, for example, in Tamil Nadu, probably you can give 1 lakh rupees. In, uh, in UP, can you give 1 lakh rupees? That is the question. Actually, it is the opposite. In UP, we can give more <laughs> because uh, the... After the HHI norms, etc., what we can actually lend to a household, we are restricted in southern India. The rejections are high by uh, at almost 25-20%, while the rejections in UP are 20-odd percent. So, and the thing is, the paying capacity across India, people have in micro So, I would say 90-95% in people... Uh, of microfinance borrowers do have the repayment capacity. And just to give you a flavor, Western UP is probably the highest in terms of income generating levels you know, as compared to probably, you know, uh, most of the states, you know. True, 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 true. Uh, uh, Sir, so, uh, another thing was that I remember many years back you started your cashless uh, initiatives for disbursements as well as connections. So, what levels have you reached uh, today? And in terms of the process of driving this cashless disbursement and collection, uh, uh, how do you do it? Is it like do you have a nodal bank where all accounts are linked to that bank and the uh, transactions come through one nodal bank? Or are you uh, more diversified and you go to a particular customer and uh, or a, a particular borrower and they have, say, in SBI, then you transfer the money to SBI. If they have in Canada Bank, you will do it Canada how exactly is it structured? So we are bank agnostic you know, in terms of cashless uh, collection. For us, what, you know, methodologies of the website, QR code, as well as app everywhere, and UPI uh, coming in, you know, across over there. So that, that which is, if you look at it, your cashless, uh, which is touching money, is about 2%. Now, when we talk about cashless, I think, you know, for us, what is more important for us is customer to be there in the meeting, you know, and normally we've seen that the customer actually goes through a cashless mode of making a payment for her, attending a meeting is kind of, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, they tend to avoid the meeting. We don't want that, you know. That's the reason why for us the model, the model is based upon the customer connect tap over the customer and that's the reason why for us this has an increase about 10% and we would like the customer to come to the meeting, have a physical presence and the interaction with the loan officer probably gives us more insight in terms of the portfolio quality and the credit asset quality at least, you know. Uh, but to add up, for us, all the uh, cash is handled by our uh, by our agencies, you know, which already do cash collection. is typically cash collection through their, uh, through their associates, you know, uh, which are being done also. Normally, for us, our boys only take the cash to the branch, and the rest, everything is handled by the uh, uh, these uh, uh, cash crop agencies, you know, which do as well. So, you may ask as Also, you, you mentioned about disbursement. Also, the last many years, we have been doing 100% uh, cash yeah. funds disbursement. Sir, so I asked this question because ITA recently has been imposing several restrictions on individual banks, citing whether IT related issues or compliance related issues. So, if it may not be your fault at all, if you are heavily concentrated to one nodal bank, if they find something wrong in that bank's processes, your disbursements may get hit. So that is why I asked this question. Is there a risk to that? Uh, I don't know whether you heard my speech, you know, for us. The acquisition of onboarding, onboarding of a customer is absolutely very, very faultless. With authentication of KYC, oh, you, sir. Norm and Iris, uh, so of which I think is getting into the bank now. Uh, so over there, you know, we are just so we actually have no problem. You know, if we, uh, 
So we have problem of our yeah. bank, you know, which we've got several banks you know, which are lined up, you know, so we don't have a problem with the, there that is not a, there's not a single bank, you know, there are a lot of banks, you know, basically, whom we can. So, so one point, which is if I can squeeze to ask Yeah. So may I ask one more question? Otherwise, I'll go back in this room. It's a tiny question. Yeah, tiny answer then. Please ask. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so are you seeing any slowdown uh, because of the elections uh, in Q1? Because this is this time around, it was a very prolonged election where like there is a lot of disruption at the ground level. So, any any impact that we can expect in Q1 in terms of like, low maybe a little bit in terms of disruption. You no, know, but I think you know added to this, but this, this whole season is all about uh, harvesting. Its whole season is all about marriages. Its whole season is all about basically uh, you know. Uh, you know, people not being available because of various factors of, you know, festivals being there, you know. We had all these Haki, Bihu, uh, Bengali New Year, everything, you know. So I think if you put all that culmination together, it'll be slightly the slower in terms of disbursement. But I think, you know, my sense is that when the uh, May comes in, and I think we'll be able to uh, bounce back in, in the normal uh, bond lenses, I think, in terms of disbursement. Thank you very much, Aditi Thank you very much, Yusuf. Uh, uh, all the best for the next Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Pratamesh Savan from Access Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, congratulations on great of numbers to Satin and T. So my question is with respect to, oh, sir, looking at the last two three years, the overall NPA levels have been going on throughout the industry. So I just want to understand from your piece of experience, is because of the political in your key market and given that we are seeing that the same political situation will continue for the next five years, do we see the kind of NPA numbers for the next five years or is it just at the good end of the political cycle? I just wanted to have what your, your insights on this. See, uh, uh, I'll be very apolitical when I answer this. You know, uh, definitely, yes, stable environment will add on to uh, uh, the NPA levels uh, going down, you know. Uh, but having said that, I think, you know, for us, uh, the more focused as an institution we are towards, you know, asset quality and credit cost, I think, you know, uh, the underwriting capabilities actually come back uh, to the fore, you know, uh, uh, which is more important, you know. So I think, you know, stability does add to it, but I think, you know, more than to it, you know, that's what, you know, we as an institution are trying very hard to do it, to maintain our underwriting capabilities, augment our underwriting capabilities, look at uh, customer acquisition through all the lens, you know, and that's the reason why we said that for us, identification and all that acquisition and everything uh, gives us maybe a slight edge in terms of how we are able to uh, do the acquisition and the underwriting of customer, you know, moving forward. And that'll be a, uh, that'll be a significant thing, you know, which we really want to uh, really concentrate upon and look forward to. Because largely, uh, again, most of the questions have been answered. So, just one broad question on, you know, what are the two or one test risks that you see between, you know, coming? Yeah, it's not you when it comes, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but, but as an endeavor for us, you know, uh, we are always, you know, uh, on our toes to really look at, you know, probably, you know, the ways and uh, means to how to do it. And uh, just to give you that example, you know, for us, uh, Punjab came in, you know, uh, without even uh, our thing, you know, but since we have capability in our technology, in our data, in our underwriting, and we have a capability which we feel is sufficient enough, we were able to sustain the damage in Punjab much better than, you know, uh, you know, much better than what, you know, the industry has been talking about. And I think, you know, that's probably the answer which I can give you. Uh, uh, do you see any structural overhang where, you know, RBI comes in, you know, uh, uh, controlling on the rate that the MSI state has been doing? So, do you see positive as a risk? That's not a risk. That's a collaborative effort, you know, where the RBI would definitely love us as an institution to probably give a lower uh, credit, uh, you know, cost, uh, lower credit, uh, you know, output to our borrowers. And definitely, and we are... We are all moving towards that, you know. So the reason why we've done risk based pricing and uh, looking at a 40 basis point uh, reduction was from 1st of April is, you know, where I think, you know, it's been a collaborative effort with RBI and, and, and uh, all the MFI together. So would this impact have an impact on, you know, target ROAs and ROEs going in? No, 
it, it won't be <laughs> used in our guidance. You know, you've got other ways to probably, you know, uh, cut down on this thing. You know, you can cut down on your OPEX. You can look at credit costs. You can look at cost of funds. There are too many features, you know, which is probably there. You know, so any reduction in uh, ultimate cost, you know, you know, five other factors which will probably give you that kind of uh, answer, you know. Sounds great, sir. Thank for your attention. Right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Ms. Aditi Singh, Head Strategy for Closing Comments. Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you so much for taking time to come on this call, for all the engaging questions, and for the trust you have shown for all the support. We have tried to answer all of the questions, and still, if you want any further follow-on discussions, you can reach out to me or my colleague, Ms. Rita Pansal from the Investor Relations team, and we'll be more than happy to discuss and uh, share more perspectives on any topic you want to discuss in detail. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.